It's been about 20 years since Honda first introduced the Pilot nameplate to America, and in that time frame, this has quickly become one of the top-selling three-row family SUVs that money can buy. So for the all-new fourth generation, Honda is looking to raise the bar with the completely redesigned Pilot. It's built off of their new light truck architecture. Under the hood, it has a completely new V6 engine. For those of you who need a little more capability, there's now the Pilot Trail Sport, an off-road oriented version of the Pilot that includes a one inch suspension lift, all-terrain tires, and a new trail torque logic control within its standard all wheel drive system. So today, as you can see, Honda has brought us out to beautiful Sedona, Arizona. And the big question I wanna answer, if you guys are in the market for a new three row family SUV, has the company made enough changes to the Pilot to make this among the best in the segment? Stay tuned to find out. Okay, so for the first part of this video, we're gonna show you guys the Elite trim. We'll switch back to that Trail Sport later on, but before we talk about the exterior styling of the new Pilot, let's go ahead and show you guys what's underneath the hood. Now, unlike some competitors that offer several different engine options, Honda keeps it pretty simple here. And what you're looking at is an all new V6. At least that's what they're telling us. It's the same displacement as the old engine, a three and a half liter, V6 with variable valve timing and direct injection. It does not have VTEC, however, but it also still has a J-Series engine code name from the factory. Even though this is a new engine, the biggest difference, again, is the fact that it's a new block. It's now a double overhead cam engine as opposed to a single overhead cam. So uh, again, Honda wanted this engine for improved emissions. That's, the, that's what they were targeting. And the horsepower numbers are 285. So you get five more horsepower versus the previous generation and 262 pound-feet of torque. Now, unlike the old Pilot, which had that nine-speed ZF transmission, this now has the corporate 10-speed that is a Honda design trans transmission that's standard across the board on all trims. Uh, and uh, fuel economy, that actually went down a little bit for the new generation. And that's because this platform here is a lot heavier. Uh, this model here, the Elite, is rated at 1925. If you guys go for the Trail Sport, it drops it down further to 1823. At least this engine does run on regular. Honda doesn't claim a 0 to 60 performance, but we've got our testing equipment. We'll see what we can do uh, out here in Arizona. Uh, and this will tow a maximum of 5,000 pounds, which is pretty much the norm for the segment. Uh, I believe they said the top speed was around 133 miles an hour. And as this one sits, it weighs in at around 4,600 pounds, which is about 300 pounds heavier versus the prior generation. But let's go ahead and close up the hood and talk about the exterior styling. Uh, because this model here, the Elite, is the top-of-the-line version. There are actually six different trims of the Pilot. The LX trim, which Honda didn't announce at launch, uh, is now going to be available, and that's going to be the new entry point. The Elite, however, is the smorgasbord. It has everything that you can get on the Pilot, and you can see the front fascia looks a lot like the new CRV with this bold new upright grille the very large Honda logo. You can see there's now a camera here with a front washer. This is the first pilot ever to get a full 360 camera, plus the trail watch camera that you get from the Trail Sport model. You can see all of them come with full multi-reflector LED headlights. Uh, the Elite version has a lot of chrome over here along the grille. You have more chrome here along the lower areas of the front splitter, and then you have LED fog lights down here with some integrated parking sensors. Overall, I think the look is much improved. The old Pilot had too much like a minivan-like design. This one definitely goes with a little bit more of a butcher, uh, more of a boxier shape, a little bit more rugged and tough. That's what Honda was going with. Now, the Pilot is now built on their new light truck architecture. This is one of the first vehicles to have this new platform. And because of that, Honda was able to make this car a lot larger. So at 199.9 inches long, this is about three and a half inches longer overall. It makes it about two inches longer than something like the Telluride and the Palisade, and about five inches longer versus the Toyota Highlander, at least not the Grand Highlander, which we'll see uh, later this or later next month. And its wheelbase is 113.8. It's about 2.8 inches longer than the prior generation. That's going to give us more interior space on the inside, which we'll talk about in just a moment. Now, looking over here on, on the wheels, this Elite version has its unique 20-inch wheel wrapped in a 255 uh, 50 series all, all season tire. Now this tire is about 10 millimeters wider versus the previous generation. You can see the wheels. I like the design. I'll show you guys the design on the, the Trail Sport later. The wheel arches you can see are just body or they're gray, uh, gray plastic. Uh, and then you have around 7.3 inches of ground clearance here on this Elite trim, which is actually the same as the prior generation. Now uh, LED turn signals are included here in the mirrors, which are also body colored. Um, the Elite comes standard with a panoramic glass roof. It's one of the few, what's, it's the only vehicle in this segment that offers eight passenger seating with a true panoramic view roof that opens. You also have a nice uh, 
a roof rails at the top where you can uh, put stuff on the roof for this vehicle. And then coming around the back, you can see the design is also pretty distinctive. Actually, I see a little bit of Subaru in the design. Now, one thing I do want to point out, the front end has LED turn signals. This model here, or at least all the new pilots have an incandescent turn signal and incandescent reverse lights, but the brake lights, however, are full LED. On the Elite, you can see it kind of blacks out the pilot badge here along the back of the vehicle, and then you have uh, a rear spoiler back here with the third brake light, and then down here you can see you have dual exhaust tips, which are kind of rectangular. They're integrated into the actual uh, rear bumper itself, uh, but overall, it's a nice looking design. And I, I really like how Honda's made this, again, a lot more uh, a lot more boxy. Now, looking at the cargo area, uh, this is where Honda also was able to improve the space because of that increased length. You get around 18.8 .8 cubic feet of total space with the third row seat up, which is a pretty good amount. It's about two cubic feet more versus the previous generation. Uh, and you can see all of our backpacks are back here, but if you lift this area up, you can see there's a pretty big storage area, about 1.8 cubic feet. That actually has enough space to put the second row middle seat underneath the floor here, which I showed you guys in our first look video. That is included on the Touring and the Elite trims. Then if you want, you can fold down the third row here, which is pretty easy to do, although Honda doesn't offer a power folding third row. When you fold that down, it increases the space to around 46 cubic feet of space, uh, which is again about three cubic feet more. If you fold down the second row and everything, Honda offers a maximum of 87 cubic feet, which is about a five cubic feet increase. So in terms of the space, this is pretty much on par with what you're gonna get from the Palisade and the Telluride, more than the Highlander, but something like the Chevrolet Traverse uh, is gonna offer a little bit more cargo room. So now that we showed you guys the high-end Elite trim, we've switched back over to the Trail Sport model. As you can see, I've got this gorgeous backdrop. This is actually at the very top of the trailhead of the Broken Arrowhead Trail. This is where we actually drove the Pilot Trail Sport up here to get these shots, because I do wanna talk about the styling differences with this car. Now, first of all, this diffused sky blue is exclusive to the Trail Sport model, and it really stands out in a great way, especially with all the kind of reddish accents and background here in Arizona. And just like the Elite trim, you can see you've got the bold new face of the Pilot. It's got a new grille that's much larger. It's blacked out on the Trail Sport model. You have a Trail Sport badge, and then you have kind of like a more skid plate-like look to the front end, which by the way, if you look underneath here, the Trail Sport is the only model that actually gives you skid plates, full underbody skid plates, and Honda claims it's designed to hold the weight of the vehicle. We'll be testing that out uh, later on in the video where I show you uh, how this vehicle gets through the actual trail. But the rest of the car you can see has pretty much the same design cues here. Although on the Trail Sport model, a lot of the chrome bright accents have been blacked out here. But the biggest change you're gonna see from the side are gonna be the wheels. You can see you've got a new 18 inch wheel that kind of has a unique uh, lip to it where it's going to help protect it from damage when you actually are driving on the trails. And then for the first time ever, Honda is putting a an actual all-terrain tire. These are a Continental all-terrain tire wrapped in a 265-60 R18 R, uh, tire. The suspension also has been off-road tuned. You have an extra inch of suspension lift, so you have a total of 8.3 inches of ground clearance. Now, if you're keeping score, that's pretty similar to what you get in the Kia Telluride X-Pro, but something like the Subaru Ascent technically has a little bit more ground clearance. Now, unlike the Elite, you have a black painted uh, side mirror here. You also have black door handles. And then this model also still comes with a panoramic sunroof with, of course, the black accents for the roof rails, more black uh, along the fender arches. And then looking at the rear of the vehicle, you can see it's all pretty much uh, similar design cues here, again, with more black accents here. The one thing that I do want to point out on the Trail Sport is you do get a standard tow hitch, because remember, this vehicle will tow up to 5,000 pounds. So for those of you who plan to do a lot of towing, you should know that this comes directly from the factory. So moving to the interior of the fully redesigned Pilot. I'm gonna show you guys the interior of the Elite model because this has all the bells and whistles. When I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember this is built off of their new light truck architecture. And you guys also heard it has a new chime, which definitely gives you the impression that Honda went all out with this redesigned Pilot. Now you can see here's the key fob for the vehicle. This is their newer, uh, corporate key that you see on other Honda models. You can see it has their usual buttons, lock, unlock, remote start, uh, open up the lift gate and panic. Uh, I believe you should be able to access this vehicle through your smartphone. I just never have had access to it because again, that's only for an actual owner of the vehicle. Every pilot comes standard with push button start, except the base LX model. It has push button start, but it doesn't have the smart key proximity key, uh, which all the other trims have. So when you want to start the vehicle up, you can see 
It has the newer Honda Chime. The start stop button here go glows from white to red once the vehicle is started. And then this being the Elite trim, you can see this is the only model that has the fully digital 10.2 inch cluster. It's customizable. We've seen this cluster display in Civics before. Um, it actually, it's a really nice looking display, very similar to what Acura does. But again, if you guys go for any other trim, you have a half digital display. So the left side will be digital. The right side will be an analog speedometer on every other trim except for the Elite. Thankfully, most pilots will have the larger nine inch display. However, if you guys go for the LX or the Sport, you'll actually have a seven inch display, which is kind of insulting given the size and the positioning of this vehicle in the lineup. You can see that's the same display that we find in the Civic. I'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, in terms of the materials, you can see the door panel has a soft touch injection molded plastic. Surprisingly, no wood in this vehicle or no faux wood. Honda kind of gives you this kind of um, weird looking almost like aluminum looking black painted plastic with these little metallic dots in them. Some of you may prefer that over wood. This being the Elite, I kind of was expecting to find wood. Down here you can see it's padded where you'd rest your elbows. The windows are one touch, all four automatic, which is definitely nice. Not sure if that's only on the higher trims. The steering wheel you can see is pretty similar to the new Civic in terms of its steering wheel, although the diameter feels a little bit larger. It does have a manual tilt and telescoping with a pretty good amount of adjustability and range. The horn, Sounds pretty good. It's pretty much what I expect for a vehicle of this size. You do have paddles on the wheel for the 10 speed auto. And then you can see the dashboard has a soft touch injection molded plastic along with this really interesting uh, brown leather, uh, almost like a mocha chocolate leather that you find on the dash with genuine stitching. Uh, this interior color, as you can see, is the brown that only comes on the Elite trim. Now, uh, looking going back to the dashboard here, you're noticing there is a nice little storage tray on the passenger side. That wasn't on the previous gen. However, we haven't seen that since the, the second gen pilot, I believe. So Honda wanted to give us a little bit more storage for the front passenger. You have a lot more storage down here where you have basically room for two smartphones. There's a wireless phone charging pad here. You can see my phone. My iPhone 14 Pro Max fits nicely. There's room for another phone, but that's not a wireless charging pad. You have two USB charging ports, an A and a C. And then you can see here you have tri-zone automatic climate control with a lot of piano black uh, plastic trim. As you can see, it gets dirty pretty quickly. The Elite is the only trim to give you heated and ventilated front seats, along with heated second row seats. And then my seat here is a 12-way power adjustment. So it's 10 ways with two-way uh, power lumbar. And then you have two-person memory. Um, keep in mind, the passenger seat here only is a four-way power seat. There's no lumbar on this seat. Uh, I kind of think that that's a missed opportunity for Honda, but I guess they're trying to save a few things for the Acura MDX. Now, going back to this display here, I've showed you guys this display before. The interface, this is uh, Honda Link, their latest interface, although technically not their latest. The new Accord, which we'll be driving uh, in a couple weeks, has their newer 12.3 inch display. This nine inch display looked pretty good in the Civic when it came out a couple years ago. In the Pilot, it looks okay, but it's also looking a little small. Uh, thankfully, most trims have this display. You can see it includes wireless wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but it doesn't have over-the-air updates. It's not like a Google Android-based system like you find in the new Accord on the top touring trim. There's what it looks like for the actual display. It's relatively quick and snappy and responsive. It does have embedded factory GPS. You have to go for the touring trim and up to get the GPS, which you can see it works just fine. Um, most people are gonna end up using their phone anyways, but this is a huge improvement over the prior generation of the Pilot, so at least it's, you know, this is much better. You do have a volume knob here with tuning buttons, an actual home button here with a back button. So again, this all works fairly well. If I put the vehicle in reverse, you can see there is your full 360 camera with a top-down view, which definitely gives you uh, a nice amount of um, views to see what's around the vehicle. You also have rear cross traffic alert and automatic emergency braking. And you also have like a trail view camera that this is the only trim along with the trail sport to give you the full 360 camera. So again, great technology. The resolution is good. I like the fact that Honda is finally offering a 360 camera, which is nice. Um, over here in this rest of the center stack, you can see this controls the 10 speed auto, uh, which is their traditional uh, push button shifter. You have a drive mode selector here, which there are seven different drive modes, if you can believe it, starting at sport, normal, eco, snow, trail, sand, and tow. Now the sand and the trail modes only come with all wheel drive, which we'll talk about those driving modes later on when we're in the driving scene. But again, lots of different drive modes because Honda wanted this vehicle to feel a lot more upscale and refined and kind of give you a uh, all this kind of customization. Now over here on the center stack, you can see or there's a fairly large center console with a padded area here. Open this up, you can see a lot of deep storage over here. No, looks like no USB charging ports in here, that instead they're 
over here. The cup holders, Honda says, are oversized. You can actually fit one of those large 32 ounce travel containers here or water jugs, which is definitely nice. There's like more cup holders in the doors. I think they said there was a total of 14 different cup holders. Uh, the seats have been also redesigned. I said earlier, they're heated and cooled. Uh, they're very comfortable and supportive. And then the Elite gives you this kind of upscale leather trim. And then the glove box you can see is damped, but not lined with felt. Uh, and then above me here in the center uh, console area or in the overhead console, you have LED map lighting. There's also ambient lighting in here, but I'm not gonna be able to show you that uh, on this shorter drive. And then this is the only trim to give you, or this and the Touring are the only trims to give you the 12 speaker Bose stereo system, which sounds pretty good. It's nice that Honda is finally offering a branded audio system. And then like I said earlier, big panoramic roof, which actually allows you to kind of open it up. It's one of the few, or it's the only vehicle in the segment that seats eight people that offers an opening panoramic view glass roof which is definitely an improvement over the prior generation. So overall, the interior, definitely nice, um, but I think where Honda missed an opportunity here is the small infotainment screen. So I would like to see them add the 12.3 inch display from the new Accord in you know, a, a refresh that's coming in the next couple of years. Now, moving to the second row, the Pilot, remember, is a family vehicle, and this is where Honda was able to give you more space in the second row because of that uh, nearly three inch stretch in the wheelbase. They're claiming this second row has about 2.4 inches more uh, leg room here. So around 40.8 inches definitely makes it uh, a really spacious area. However, I do believe by the numbers the Telluride and the Palisade still have an additional two more inches of leg room. But again, this is with the seat all the way back and you can see somebody who's five foot seven. I can get pretty comfortable back here. The seat also offers a pretty good amount of recline uh, and you can also remember uh, fold the seat down and then this middle seat here so the elite and the touring trim are the only trims to give you this middle seat that actually comes out this pulls out you can put it onto or under the storage floor uh, the trail sport model is the only one that gives you actual captain's chairs if you look at the base lx the sport and the exl you'll have eight passenger seating but this middle seat here doesn't come out so i like how honda gives you the two choices because if you want you can fold this down you can see there are cup holders it's a nice padded armrest area here so you still kind of get the functionality of captain's chairs but remember if you do take this out which weighs about 20 pounds so it's not super heavy um, you are going to lose armrests here. So kind of keep that in mind. If you want the true captain's chairs with the fold out armrests, the trail sport model is the only one to give you that. But once you kind of are back here, you can see the elite is the only trim to give you heated rear seats back here. So you have three level heated seats. You have your own set of climate controls. You have two USB charging ports an actual uh, household outlet down here, which is pretty nice. Um, if you're looking for ventilated second row seats, again, that's something that its competitors offer. Honda doesn't offer that. And remember, you have to go for the elite to kind of get uh, all of the bells and whistles here for the second row. Now getting into the third row, as I said, if you want to take this out, you can, which it's pretty easy to do. Uh, but Honda also has a little button here on the side, which is low, which you can see here allows the seat to kind of move forward, which is pretty nice. But once I get back here, let's go ahead and talk about the space. I'm going to close this here so I can show you guys what it's like here. Now, in terms of the third row legroom, Honda said that they were able to add around 0.6 inches uh, of additional legroom. So 0.6 would put it at around 32 and a half uh, inches, which is not bad. You can see somebody my height at five foot seven, I can get back here. There's actually a good amount of headroom here for somebody my height, which is nice. Uh, legroom is actually pretty decent. The old pilot was a little bit tight there, uh, but you can see this new one is definitely improved. There is um, a little bit of space here where you could put a skinnier person in the middle seat. You can see it's not wonderful, but if I was going to sit here, it's not too bad. So a lot of competitors, they only actually seat two back here. So the pilot's one of the few that seats three. There are third row air vents back here, as you can see, which is something that is missing from the Acura MDX, even the Type S model. So that's something to keep in mind. Cup holders, you have two USB charging ports. Uh, but overall, as a family vehicle, this definitely has among the most spacious rear seats, third row seats in the segment. And it's one that you could actually fit average size adults back here on shorter trips. All right, so here we are back in Arizona driving the fully redesigned 2023 Pilot. Remember, this is an all new vehicle. It's got an all new V6 engine. It's finally got the 10 speed auto, so that nine speed from ZF is gone. We're in an elite trim. Let's go ahead and test out what we can get zero to 60 wise. We're gonna brake torque it. Right, so we got zero to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds. Now I do want to point out that is fairly downhill. Um, and if we find an opportunity to do another run 
I'll try to do another run. Uh, we're on a pretty short drive loop here, so uh, we'll kind of just have to take what we can get. But this engine, Honda claims, is an all-new V6. They say it's now double overhead cams. It's got a new block. It doesn't have VTEC anymore. Uh, it's the same displacement. It practically has the same output as the old engine. 285 horsepower is certainly fine. What is a huge improvement I'm noticing is the 10-speed auto. It is a Honda design transmission and it's just far more responsive when I put my foot down. It has nice smooth shifts. The engine sound, however, is it's very much a V6, but it doesn't have the same kind of note as the old VTEC single overhead cam J series. Although technically this is still a J series by the block designation that you'll find under the hood. Uh, it does sound a little different because it's lacking in the VTEC. Now I mentioned earlier, this vehicle is built on their new light truck architecture uh, and what essentially that allowed Honda to do was make the structure stiffer, make it more safe, uh, make the vehicle handle a little bit better. Uh, and it also has increased the curb weight by 300 pounds. Now I will say, I do notice that this is a big vehicle driving it. I mean, it's 78.6 inches wide. It's on the bigger end and it's almost 200 inches long. This is a good three and a half inches longer than the old Pilot. Um, but Honda always likes to favor driving dynamics, and this vehicle is still pretty easy to drive. I wouldn't say it's sporty, though. Uh, this feels very comfortable. It feels very solid. It feels almost kind of European-like in its, in its design or in its feel. And you can see the engine makes a pretty good sound. I like the sound that this V6 makes. Uh, the 10 speed I like a lot and the steering in this vehicle also feels pretty responsive and it feels like I'm driving a car that is built for long distance cruising. But you know what? Let's go ahead and uh, try another zero to 60 time here because we found a totally flat road, didn't we, Rob? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we found a totally flat road because 7.7 .7 I think is actually a little bit slow. Now Honda didn't quote a zero to 60 time, um, but we are also, I believe, at elevation here, so that's probably going to uh, affect the time slightly. But let's go ahead and try another run and see what we can do. Ooh, okay, 7.97 seconds there, and that's with it more slightly level. Earlier we were going downhill by about 4%, now it's 2%, so I'll have to wait until I re retest one of these back home, but I have to say the old Pilot was probably quicker. I think the quickest times I got in that vehicle, or at least from the magazines, I don't believe I actually physically tested that car, was around under seven seconds. So uh, keep in mind that extra weight, we are at elevation, that is going to affect the acceleration. But overall, as a daily driving, like long distance car, the ride quality is smooth, comfortable. These are the fully redesigned seats, which also I like them a lot. They're really comfortable and supportive. We've been driving this car for the past couple of hours today and I didn't have any complaints with the seats. It's also pretty quiet in here. Uh, Hondas used to be on the noisier end of the segment. Um, and now it's nice to see that they've really quieted their interiors down. I put the drive mode back into normal. This doesn't have adaptive dampers, but the ride definitely tends to skew a little more toward comfort, which is fine. That's the mission of this car. In terms of visibility, you can see out of the Pilot really well. It's got Honda's latest uh, Honda Sensing suite of safety tech. Although I would love to see Honda do a digital camera rearview mirror. For a vehicle like this, it just makes a lot of sense. Um, so I'm surprised they don't offer it. Uh, but this Elite trim, this is the most expensive one that you can get. And it has a lot of features that remind me that it's almost very Acura-like. But at the same time, um, there's also a couple of cues in here that remind you that it is a Honda. Like the nine inch display is kind of disappointing considering this is the top trim Elite and it's not like a 12 inch display on the new Accord. Uh, but overall, in terms of the dynamics on the road, I think Honda nailed it pretty well. But uh, we're gonna switch into a trail sport model because Honda prepar or prepared a really cool off-road course for us, or they didn't prepare it. They are sending us on an off-road excursion in the trail sport. So let's go ahead and see how the most off-road capable version does in those conditions. Now, because Honda wanted to really show off the off-road capability of their new Pilot, we have switched to this trail sport model. And we're on this pretty challenging trail uh, here in Arizona. We're gonna see what the actual trail sport is capable of. Now, this is a vehicle that I really wasn't expecting to be able to do these kinds of difficult terrain. I mean, 
The new Trail Sport has about 8.3 inches of ground clearance. It's about an inch more versus the standard Pilot. We've got uh, their second generation, of course, of their iVTM4, their variable torque management, all-wheel drive system. It's got seven different drive modes, and I'm in the trail mode right now. Uh, which means it uses what Honda calls a trail torque logic to appropriate power to the correct wheel that has actual grip. And now speaking of the wheels, we have a unique 18-inch wheel on an all-terrain, a continental all-terrain tire. These are 265-60R18 tires. And to be honest, they're a pretty aggressive tire for something like a Pilot. Remember, this is a family SUV that literally can seat up to eight people, although this model here that we're driving only seats seven. Uh, and with 8.3 inches of ground clearance, I haven't had to use the skid plates yet, which is definitely nice. Although Honda promises me we're going to be using the skid plates at some point. The one thing I do like, however, are these trail cams, which are standard on this model because you have four 360 view basically, which is allowing me to see completely around the vehicle so I can avoid all these sticks and shrubs that could mess up the diffuse sky paint, which is a really nice color, by the way. It looks good out here. Uh, on this kind of like red muddy terrain. And I've got uh, my editor Rob behind me kind of videoing the car. So I'm trying not to leave him in the dust, but this car just kind of makes it super easy to drive through the trail back here. So <laughs> it uh, hasn't scraped anything yet, but again, this is a kind, the kind of vehicle that Honda says people are gonna take their vehicle out to campsites, to do some mountain biking, some hiking and whatnot. And you can essentially just do that in this model pretty easily. So I'm gonna let Rob get in front of me really quick and kind of get a different view of the car. But you can see we haven't really hit anything yet that has been super challenging for this vehicle, but Honda promises later out on the trail we'll be able to do that. Do you guys wanna get in at the next corner? <laughs> yes. Okay, I was like, I was like, here. All right, so now we are going up this slightly more challenging climb, and this is a good test of the tires, the all-wheel drive system, the skid plates of the vehicle, because this is where Honda, again, spent a good amount of a development money trying to get this car to be actually more off-road capable. I mean, I never drove the prior gen Trail Sport model, but it was definitely more of a appearance package. Now, I actually just went over a rock there. It did scrape the skid plate, but that skid plate is capable of holding the actual weight of the vehicle. So we're going to go up this hill right here, add a little more throttle, and really this car just kind of eats it up. It goes through it with such ease. I mean, this is way more capability than any owner of a Pilot is going to probably need, but the fact that Honda gives it to you right off the showroom floor is very, very impressive. Now here, we're gonna go through this area. Okay, this is pretty muddy here. So we're gonna see if this can make it up here. <laughs> I'm a little skeptical, but I believe in you, Honda. Let's see what you can do here. So remember, this is a big vehicle. And this is kind of what holds it back a little bit on these tighter trails, but all right, it's kind of climbing, we're climbing, we're spinning. Come on, figure it out, Trail Torque Logic. There we go. Just a little more throttle and it automatically breaks the slipping wheel and it's literally sending power to the wheel with grip. You can feel it slipping a little bit, but that traction control system is just sending the power where it needs to go. That's impressive. That is seriously impressive technology here. And the fact that you can do this in a three row family crossover just makes it even more appealing. So this trailhead that we're on is called Broken Arrow Trail, just outside of Sedona, Arizona. And we're gonna go up this kind of stair step climb. That's what uh, Honda was calling it. And we should be able to test out those skid plates and of course, test out the tires, the all wheel drive system. I've got uh, Rob out there right now filming me as I go up this climb. This is where we're really gonna be able to test out the ground clearance of this vehicle and the all wheel drive system. Literally just applying a little bit of light throttle. All right, there we go. <laughs> there is some, uh, some nice uh, skidding action of the skid plates, but uh, we made it up there just fine. Had to give it a little more throttle to get up the hill, but it did it just fine. It's very impressive actually what this car is capable of. And I think for those of you who have never driven or never thought a pilot could go off-roading like this, you're gonna be really impressed with what this thing can do right out of, right out of the box. 
So after spending the day driving the all new 2023 fourth generation Pilot, it's pretty clear to me that Honda engineers knew exactly what things to change from the prior generation in order to create a new three row family SUV that's going to appeal to a lot of modern American families. I think the biggest winner is probably the exterior design. The old Pilot's minivan proportions just never really worked for me. Uh, in this new version, especially in the trail sport painted in this sonic gray, it has a much more masculine boxy uh, look to it that really is going to appeal to a lot of younger families, especially if you guys like the kind of blacked out look with the all-terrain tires, which also gives you some genuine capability. The interior, however, is where families are really going to appreciate all the changes, and because this car is bigger on the outside, Honda was able to give us more interior space. I love the fact that you can get an eight-passenger version in the top-of-the-line versions, along with an actual opening panoramic roof. In terms of the cargo area, it offers a lot more space. The third row is actually usable for uh, average size adults to smaller kids and then the second row with that choice of the captain's chairs on this trail sport or that removable middle seat which really gives uh, parents the flexibility to add that that uh, extra seat on demand and then hide that seat under the seat or under the floor in the trunk area is just a really nice addition. The interior, however, is let down by the technology. I don't like that nine inch screen, especially considering the fact that Honda has a bigger display in the new Accord. So hopefully they're gonna add that in the coming years. And in terms of the V6 engine, it basically drives like the pre previous generation in terms of acceleration. However, we'll have to wait to retest this vehicle when we get one back home because we are at around 4,000 feet above sea level here, which definitely uh, made the vehicle feel a little bit slower in the actual real world. But if you guys are looking to purchase just the all-new Pilot. This vehicle is on sale now. It just went on sale earlier this month, and it starts at $35,950. That's for the new LX trim. And originally, if you go to Honda's website, the LX trim isn't there. The Sport was the base version. That starts at around thirty-nine dollars Most of you are going to go to an EXL that's around $42,000. The Touring is around forty-six. dollars This Trail Sport model is actually positioned in price above the Touring, but it also has features that the Touring doesn't have and vice versa. So this car here, starts at around $48,800, add the $1,300 destination charge, and you're looking at just under $50,000 for a vehicle like this. Now, keep in mind, the Elite that I showed you earlier is around $53,000, so the new Pilot is around $1,100 to $1,800 more expensive, which makes sense. There's a ton of new equipment on this vehicle that's going to make it a little bit more expensive, but I think what Honda has delivered here is a vehicle that's going to appeal to a lot of modern American families, especially if you need extra capability and extra interior space. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2023 Honda Pilot. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.